Hi, you're watching ClickSense SAML Okta Configuration. I'm Jeff Goldberg, and in this video, I'm going to walk through setting up a ClickSense virtual proxy to work with Okta's identity management as a service platform. Before we get started, there are a few pieces of information I want to share. I'm assuming you have some familiarity with the Click Management Console, or the QMC, and the concept of virtual proxies in ClickSense. If you have not used the QMC before, I recommend watching the QMC in 45 video series located at the link you can click on below. Lastly, ClickSense supports service provider or SP initiated flow of SAML only. Okay, let's get started. First, let's set up a virtual proxy for Okta and ClickSense to communicate with each other. From the QMC menu, click on the virtual proxies link under configure system. Click the button on the bottom of the screen labeled Create New. The Edit Virtual Proxy screen will appear. I'm going to use Okta for the description, prefix, and append it to the end of the session cookie header name. Now let's click on the Authentication Property menu item on the right side of the screen. In the dropdown for the authentication method, select SAML. The SAML configuration appears. Start with the SAML host URI, which is the URI users will enter to access ClickSense. I'm just going to go ahead and enter the name of my server now. The entity ID is a unique identifier for this SAML configuration. Let's enter Okta here. The next item in order is the SAML metadata from the identity provider. Okta is our identity provider, and we will obtain metadata when we set up the SAML configuration in Okta. For now, we'll move on to the rest of the ClickSense configuration. For this example, I'm going to use the user's email address stored in Okta as the SAML attribute for user ID. It is possible to choose a different standard or custom field within the Okta configuration to act as the user ID. For the SAML user directory, I'm going to use a static attribute that I'll supply. I'm going to call the user directory Okta and surround the value with square brackets. The SAML signing algorithm is a relatively new option to the SAML configuration screen. This is a toggle between SHA-1 and SHA-256 for the encryption used by the signing certificate. The only time it is necessary to toggle this value to SHA-256 is if you are knowingly using a third-party certificate generated using Microsoft's enhanced RSA cryptographic provider. As of this taping, many certificate generation tools continue to sign the certificate in SHA-1. This may change over time. Make sure to speak with your certificate administrator for more information. The last part of the configuration is the SAML attribute mapping. This is a place to assign attributes provided in a SAML response to the ClickSense server, a name that can be used in security rules to govern access and capabilities to ClickSense resources. I want to highlight that attributes provided through SAML do not get stored in the ClickSense repository. Therefore, they will not appear in the properties for users in the QMC. Instead, SAML attributes are available during the user's authenticated session referenced in security rules as user.environment. the name of the attribute. I'll cover this capability in depth in another video. For this example, I'm going to add the group attribute to the SAML assertion that will come from Okta. Click the Add New Attribute button. In the line that appears, the name I enter on the left side is the attribute name in the SAML assertion, in this case, groups. On the right is the attribute name ClickSense will respond to when using this attribute in security rules. The mandatory checkbox indicates if the attribute is required to process user authentication. I'm going to uncheck this box because I don't need this to be a mandatory attribute. Now that I'm done with the authentication configuration, click on the load balancing property menu item. Click on the add new server node button and select the engine nodes this virtual proxy will load balance connections to. Click on the Advanced Property menu item and add the host name of the ClickSense server in the host whitelist. Add any tags or custom properties if you have them, and then click the Apply button to create the virtual proxy, and click OK on the message that appears. 
The last step in the configuration is to link the virtual proxy to a ClickSense proxy so connections can be made to the ClickSense site. Click on the Proxies item under Associated Items on the right side of the screen. Link the virtual proxy to the proxy or proxies that will use this configuration. I'm going to choose the central node only because it's the only proxy node I have. The QMC will prompt for a refresh. After refreshing the QMC, navigate back to the virtual proxy screen, click on the Okta configuration I created, and then click on the Download SP Metadata button at the bottom of the screen. Before starting the Okta portion of the configuration, let's have a look at the metadata ClickSense generated. There are three items to take note of. The first is the Entity ID. We will need this value to enable Okta to talk to the ClickSense server. The second is the Assertion Consumer Service URL. This is the URL ClickSense generates when we enter the SAML host URI and adds the virtual proxy path to the end. Notice that SAML Authn has been added to the end. This is the URL Okta will use to communicate SAML assertions to ClickSense. The third is the name ID format. By default, the transient name format is specified in the metadata. It is not always required to be set this way in SAML configurations, but to ensure proper operability, I recommend making note of this value and setting it appropriately in the configuration. Armed with this information, we can begin the Okta configuration. In the Okta console, click Add Application. Click on the green button labeled Create New App. Okta provides one option for creating a new application integration, and that's SAML 2.0. Click the Create button to continue. The configuration screen appears, and I'm going to call this app ClickSense SAML Configuration. If I wanted, I could add a logo for this connection, but I'm going to skip it for now. The last thing I'll do before clicking Next is checking the boxes that limit the app visibility. I don't want to show this tile to users because if they clicked on it, authentication to ClickSense would fail. Why? Well. Okta doesn't have an option in their SAML configuration for SP-initiated flow. If I click on the tile for this connection after it's configured, Okta will attempt an identity provider-initiated authentication request to ClickSense. As I mentioned before at the beginning, this attempt will fail because ClickSense supports SP-initiated flow only. We'll go into how to work with that later on. The SAML settings panel appears and we're going to start by entering the Assertion Consumer Service URL from our SP metadata into the single sign-on URL field. Make sure to include that trailing slash after SAML Authn, or ClickSense will not accept the SAML assertion. For the audience URI, enter the entity ID value from the SP metadata we opened earlier. Finally, for the name ID format, change it to transient so that it matches the SP metadata value. If you click on the Advanced Settings link, there are additional settings that can be controlled. As of ClickSense 2.2.4, none of these settings require modifications. Let's move on to Attributes. In the Attribute Statement section, I'm going to add the email attribute. I'm going to send the email with an unspecified name format and set it to the user.email attribute variable name in Okta. I'm sending the email because that's what I'm using as the user ID value in my ClickSense configuration. Moving to the group attribute statement, I'm going to create an attribute named groups with an unspecified name format as well, and set a regular expression pattern to include all group values a user may have assigned to them in Okta. Now I can click the next button. I may receive or you may receive a screen with a radio button asking if you are a customer or a partner. If you do, select the Okta customer value and check the box stating the configuration is for an internal app. Click the finish button. I'm brought to the sign on page. From this page, I can download the IDP metadata. ClickSense requires the metadata have an XML extension, so make sure to save the file as metadata.xml. Click on the people menu item. Assign users to the app so they will be able to use the created connection. Even though they're not going to see it, they still need the app assigned to them. Now, before we test the connection, we need to add the IDP metadata to the ClickSense virtual proxy. 
navigate back to the QMC and open the configuration for the Okta virtual proxy. Click on the Choose File button next to the IDP metadata and select the metadata file downloaded from Okta. Click Apply, then OK, and allow the QMC to refresh. OK, time to test the SAML configuration. Open a fresh browser and navigate to the ClickSense server URL, including the virtual proxy path. Immediately, the browser is redirected to Okta to authenticate the login request. Type in the user credentials and observe how Okta redirects us back to the ClickSense hub. This is great, but what if we want users to access the hub from Okta clicking on a tile instead of typing in the ClickSense URL? Well, let's go back to Okta and create another application, except this application is going to be a simple redirect to the ClickSense URL. From the Okta console, click Add Application again. In the template, type in template ws-fed and add this application. Change the application label to ClickSense Hub. For the web application URL, enter the ClickSense URL with the SAML virtual proxy and hub. For the realm, supply only the web application URL hostname. Make the reply to URL the same as the web application URL and set the audience restriction to the same URL. Make no other changes to the configuration and click Next. Add users, click Next, and then click Done. We're going to go back to a fresh browser and log into Okta first. The ClickSense Hub tile appears in the Application tab. When I click on it, I'm sent to the ClickSense server, back to Okta to verify my credentials, and back to the ClickSense Hub. I don't see it, but that's how SP Initiated Flow is working. And that's it, Okta configuration for ClickSense. Thanks very much.